For more on the plan and the work ahead, let's bring in our correspondent in Rome, Seema Gupta. Seema, good morning. This will be the first time we're really hearing from Mario Draghi since he became prime minister. Do we know anything about his policy goals yet? You're absolutely right. It's the first time that we'll really uh, get to hear uh, what his policy plan is or what he wants to say. Because up until now, all we've had is a very short acceptance speech when he was uh, accepted the mandate to become uh, the next Prime Minister of Italy. And uh, he has also no presence on social media. So uh, basically, Italians haven't heard very much from him. And this is the first time he's going to be addressing the Senate. Uh, before that, it is followed by a vote of confidence. And then there will be a similar uh, uh, action taken in the lower house of parliament uh, tomorrow. But what we do expect him to do is unveil some element of his agenda. What we know he said so far is he's called for unity in this um, government uh, which is across the board all kinds of parties involved previous rivals that have now come together now he is expected to stress the issue of defeating the pandemic of course Italy coming close to now a uh, hundred thousand deaths uh, we're over 93,000 uh, he's stressing on the vaccination program as well as dealing with the variants but also of course the economic issues, the fact that Italy is set to receive more than 200 billion euros in EU recovery fund money and how that's going to be spent. So uh, many are going to be looking to see what he's going to do to protect business and workers and at the same time deal with some real pressing issues that have been in Italy even before the pandemic. The country has had 10 years of economic stagnation and the hope is that he will be doing a lot to deal with those issues. We've seen already in terms of his cabinet positions, he's put a lot of technocrats in key ministries to deal with those uh, hard-hit issues that the country needs to face. So it's not just the economic crisis, but also the health crisis. Now, Draghi is an economist. He's a central banker. On paper, he looks like the perfect man for this job of rescuing the economy. But saving Italy's economy is a harder job than saving the euro. There's a lot more personalities at play. Exactly. I mean, he's got this coalition, he's got this a broad parliamentary majority, but we'll have to see how long that lasts. I mean, it is a fragile group of people. I mean, he's barely come into this position and already there are tensions. On Sunday, the health ministry made a decision uh, just hours before those ski resorts up north in Italy were set to reopen. Uh, essentially, the decision was made to to extend the closure because of concerns about the pandemic. There were frustrations and you already have the leader of the far-right league party, Matteo Salvini, uh, criticizing this move and saying that he wants compensation for the businesses that have been affected by this last-minute turnaround. And then you have the members of the Five Star Movement. They've largely said that they support Draghi, but there are dissidents within the party that have clearly said they expect to vote against him in the vote of confidence. Now, we do know he has the numbers at the moment. He will be able to get through. But it's clear that this is a fragile majority that he has. So some say, how long will this government last? Will it finish out its mandate till 2023? Or more likely, maybe it will end earlier. The key thing that everyone is looking at is the EU recovery fund money and the plan that Italy has to present to Brussels uh, by April. And so that at least we expect to go through. But yes, it's an unwieldy uh, coalition for the moment, though. Mario Draghi is the one that everyone is looking to. In Italy, he seems to have the support of Italians. A recent survey showed that some 67 percent of Italians support him as the prime minister. Baptism by political fire for Super Mario. Uh, Sima Gupta in Rome. Thank you so much for your reporting.